For thousands of girls, missing school when you can't afford sanitary pads could be a thing of the past. We'll meet a Kenyan lawyer keeping girls in school by supplying menstrual health products. Charting the waters. Experts say an effective hydrographic practice could preserve the seas and enhance Nigeria's economic growth and security. Inspired by the pandemic, the sculptor is crafting a name for himself in the Zimbabwean art scene. Meet David Ngorome. Hello and thanks for tuning into the show that goes around the continents to bring you stories near and far. I'm Chamber Lunasawa, Channel Television here in Lagos. I'm joined by Vincent Makori from Voice of America in Washington. Thanks, I'm Vincent Makori at The Voice of America. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Our broadcast still looks a little different because of the global pandemic, but we truly appreciate you staying with us on Africa 54. Let's start off with the latest from Nigeria. Chamberlain Uso in Lagos brings you that story. Nigeria's Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awol Gambo, is raising concern over increasing threats posed by human activities to the ocean, saying effective hydrography remains important to national economic growth and security. At a session to mark this year's 2021 Hydrography Day, emphasis were made on the need to bring to bear the gains of an effective hydrographic practice and also the importance of protecting and preserving the world's oceans and seas. Our correspondent Chris Lamps reports. Nigeria Navy joins other countries of the world in this hybrid session hosted in Monaco to pay attention to the Earth's oceans. The reasoning for the establishment this is part of activities to mark the World Hydrographic Day, which emphasizes the need for our waters to be comprehensively studied and charted in order to improve maritime activities. The United Nations expresses concern. It's my duty to repeat the remarks of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, who announced at the Blue Cop in Madrid that we are willfully destroying the life support systems of this planet. In Nigeria, as in elsewhere in the world, marinas rely on hydrographic surveys and charts to ply the ocean. This means uncharted space remains a great danger. The Chief of Naval Staff gives insight into how effective hydrography remains germane to national economic growth and security. Effective hydrographic practice will ensure adequate shark coverage of about 84,000 square nautical miles of Nigeria's territorial waters and ultimately provide up-to-date nautical products to drive Nigeria's blue economy project. In his remark, the hydrographer of the Navy says the practice of hydrography in Nigeria has greatly improved maritime safety and security with the production of local charts and surveys. The Nigerian Navy, as Nigeria's national coordinating agency in hydrography and charting, will go into full-scale hydrographic survey and charting in the next few months. Only recently, the Nigerian Navy acquired I hydrographic vessel NNS Lano, which is also fitted with the capacity to intercept or respond to maritime threats. Sandy, it's been a hundred years of international cooperation in keeping the ocean well charted. Strengthening this cooperation appears very apt as the world hopes to effectively tackle the issues of maritime safety and security. Chris Lems, Channels Television News. Rear Admiral Chukwemeka Okafo, hydrographer of the Nigerian Navy, joins us now for more. Well, thank you for joining us on Africa 54. So for World Hydrography Day, tell us, what is the significance of bringing to the fore issues surrounding our waterways and maritime security? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, to start with this, the importance of uh, World Hydrography Day is to create public awareness of the importance of hydrography to maritime navigation and other activities that take place in the maritime environment. As you are already aware, 
taking Nigeria as a maritime nation, over 90% of Nigeria's sea, uh, um, foreign trade are conducted via the sea. And uh, that is making use of vessels, ships, to convey those goods either in or out of Nigeria through our waters and then to other international waters, as the case may be. I mean, now that we're talking about diversification of our economy, how do we leverage on hydrography? The inland waters are not surveyed. They are not charted. And there are a whole lot of um, raw materials that are in the hinterland of Nigeria, which cannot be economical to transport through the road transport. And so it will be more advantageous and more economical to open up the inland waters so that barges, ships can transport those um, raw materials and other activities that are stuck there to the sea for export in order to give more revenue to Nigeria. But unfortunately, there are no existing and up-to-date nautical chart that can guide or facilitate such uh, maritime trade within our in internal waters. And so for us to leverage on hydrography, to be able to make more uh, revenue for the nation, efforts need to be made to survey and chart our inland waters, as well as the other uncharted parts of Nigerian waters. Uh, international corporations usually help build human capacity in hydrography and develop standards for hydrographic survey and charting. Now, how can this be harnessed to facilitate sustainable use of the ocean for economic growth of the country? It's already well-known fact that Hydrography is an international um, profession, so to say. The standard that is required for production of chart is global. And so we need to constantly engage the international agency that coordinates nautical charts and hydrography so as to be able to be abreast with changes in standard. And that agency is the International Hydrographic Organization. By constant uh, partnering with them, we'll be able to know the changes in standard, and so we'll apply them to all of our products so as to make them usable by international shipping. All right, then, uh, Rear Admiral Chukwemeka Okafor. Thank you. Welcome back to Africa 54, I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. In Senegal, some growers are trying new farming techniques to reduce the use of man-made chemicals and improve crop yields. Alison Likogo Fernandez checks on an agroecology experiment in a Dakar suburb. Outside the Senegalese town of Rufisk, a group of farmers is using techniques that respect the environment, protect health and produce good harvests. The method is called agroecology. Alion Balde is among 125 growers using these eco-friendly techniques to promote sustainability. After taking agroecology courses, he's testing the method of not using synthetic fertilizers or pesticides to grow crops. Chemicals are overused, putting the producer himself in danger. Usually, they give me headaches, stomach aches, you have the impression that something is wrong inside you. So, in an experiment, Balde set up two plots of 100 square meters each, with help from an expert at the Senegalese Institute for Agricultural Research and from an agricultural engineer. In one plot, Balde planted onions using chemical fertilizer and hybrid seed. In the other, he planted them using agroecological techniques. 
En ce qui concerne l'engrais chimique, il fallait le remplacer avec un engrais organique. We replaced chemical fertilizer with an organic fertilizer of composted manure. We tried to enrich the soil with nutrients, for example with phosphorus, with potassium. De nutriments, par exemple avec le phosphate, avec le potassium. When the time came to harvest the onions, the agroecological plot yielded a bigger harvest, 469 kilos. The other produced 437 kilos. Almost a dozen growers gathered to check out the results. Agricultural engineer Mamadou Lamining, who is also a project manager for the non-profit group GRDR, does not believe in pressuring growers to switch to more sustainable practices. He wants them to discover the benefits for themselves. Our approach, what is it? Set up comparison plots to allow producers to see agroeconomic performance in terms of yield, effort, expense. They can be convinced to transition to agroecology. Some growers say they want government subsidies to help transition to eco-friendly techniques and to compensate them for potential losses. Agroecology enthusiasts like Balde predict overall gains for people and the planet. Alison Ecogo Fernandez for VOA News, Rufisque, Senegal. As part of efforts in tackling security challenges in Nigeria, a distress notification application has been created by a local security startup, Seclot Technologies. The mobile application helps to alert friends, families and security agencies when an individual needs help during emergencies. The founder, Olawale Atekoja, and his team developed the app to help with personal security. Nigeria has for a number of years continued to grapple with the problem of insecurity and despite government's effort to reduce the incidence of crime in the country, the level is still high. This lingering security challenge is what motivated Olawale Atekoja and his team at Seclot Technology Limited to provide a service that enables individuals seek help when in distress. The security technology company built an emergency application that sends distress signals to the pre-registered emergency contacts of a user. We have a distress notification platform and what that basically does is this. You trigger it, it sends your geolocation, your current geolocation to friends and families that you have added on the app. So when you download the app, you basically put all your ICs, we call them in case of emergencies. When you put them there, they get notified that, okay, you've added them, and whenever you click on that, whenever you're in a distress, it sends your exact location to them, and then they can come to your aid. After you've downloaded it, and you have it on your phone, you launch the app by clicking on it. And then you can actually sign up. This is the landing page. It picks your current location, and um, here you have where you can send a distress, but before you send the distress, you basically need to add your team members, your friends, families, whatever you're going to be sending the distress to. And that's, you have it under this compass sign here. And then you can see this icon that looks like people. When you click on it, it loads people. And if you're, if you're going to add people, you then come down to this um, button here, which looks like the plus sign. When you click on it, you add your team members, when you save on it, you then go ahead to add uh, different people. So that, um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Once you're done adding all of that, this is the distress button. And I click on it, it says three, two, one, and then it sends the alert. So if you see here, it says SOS sent. And in here, it continues to notify until you cancel. Olawale and his team are also working on an online solution that will help individuals and organizations verify the addresses of their staff, job applicants, as well as their customers. It's time now for a short break, and as we do, we remind you to visit our website, channelcv.com, for news and programming around the clock. You can also find us at youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Still to come. Liquid gold or argan oil turns profit for the women of southern Morocco. The Women's Cooperative brings this beauty product from remote mountains to the global cosmetic industry.
Welcome back to Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. Thousands of girls in several African countries skip school every month when they can't afford sanitary pads. In Kenya, one lawyer is working to keep teenage girls in school by supplying the menstrual health products that their families often cannot afford. Brenda Molina has our story. Fanny Kwega and her team of volunteers make their way into an informal school in the heart of Kibera, one of East Africa's largest slums. They are bringing three months worth of menstrual health supplies, a much needed relief for these teenage girls outside Nairobi. School head Elizabeth Manyasa says the supplies help keep the girls in class. They find it very difficult to, to get sanitary towels and when they are, uh, they are experiencing menstruation period, most of them stay at home. So uh, when we look at the deaths, we can easily tell that this child is out of school because of uh, his, men, his menstrual cycle. Getting menstrual hygiene products is a challenge for the girls in these informal settlements where many people earn the equivalent of a dollar or two a day. Evelyn Odinga is a mother of three. Her 15-year-old daughter has just started her menses. Wow. She tells me that she wants money to buy pads. I am a hawker. Sometimes I have only earned 100 shillings. I need to buy vegetables and water. If I give her 50 shillings to buy towels, I feel like I am making a loss. The care packages can mean the difference between a family having a meal and a girl retaining her dignity. The reason we are doing this is because there is a dire need in the country. Kwega says as many as 70% of Kenyan girls from disadvantaged communities lack regular access to menstrual health products despite public spending. There's a program in government where all these kids need to have free sanitary towels every month, but they don't get. Kwege's MyFlow Foundation has helped more than 2,000 girls over the last year. Contributors to their Tony's non-profit group hope to give young women the confidence of having a year's worth of pads so as not to disrupt their education. The foundation also arranges mentorship programs for economically disadvantaged young women, support for teen mothers, and pro bono legal services for victims of gender-based violence. Brenda Molina for VOA News, Nairobi. In the arid mountains of southern Morocco, local women harvest argan oil, which has become highly sought after by the global beauty industry. Argan oil cooperatives are enriching amazing women of Morocco who produce what is known as liquid gold, one of the most expensive oils in the world. In the arid mountains of southern Morocco, local women harvest argan oil, a natural product they've long used in cooking, but which has become highly prized by global beauty industry as an anti-aging skin treatment and restorative for hair. Most argan oil is produced by local cooperatives of Amazigh speaking Berbin women around cities of Agadir, Sara, and Tarant, where the argan tree, which bears small green fruits resembling an olive, is common. That oil was once the most expensive in the world for centuries. It's extracted by drying argan fruit in the sun, peeling and mashing the fruit, then crushing and grinding the kernel with stones. The oil used to be put in food for flavoring or as a savory dip for bread. It's an ingredient still common in Morocco and is exported for food. But in most parts of the world, the oil is considered gold in the beauty industry. It costs around $30 to $50 a litre locally, or sells for as high as $250 a litre on the international market. Currently, there is more demand for argan oil products at the international level. And we have lots of products such as cooking argan oil and cosmetics oil. And there are also argan derivatives such as creams, shampoos and bath soaps. There is a significant increase in the demand for these products at the international level. 
Argan oil can be used to treat a number of skin conditions such as psoriasis and rosacea, acne, and it also suits atopic dermatitis and improves wound healing among other benefits. In Southern Africa, Zimbabwean sculptor David Nguerume is gaining attention for works inspired by the pandemic. Nguerume's latest piece is called Michael Jackson, named after the late US pop icon who was well known for wearing masks and a glove. Columbus Mavunga reports from Harare. The 40-year-old Zimbabwean sculptor David Nguerume now has what he calls COVID-19 coloring. His exhibit called Arms encourages people to take the COVID-19 jab to help the country reach its vaccination target of 60% by the end of the year. Another one called We Are Torn encourages people to sneeze into their elbows. And the most talked one encourages people to mask up in an exhibit called MJ, named after the late US pop icon Michael Jackson, known for wearing masks and gloves. Now, I'm using his figure around this COVID pandemic on my art to show that mask Michael Jackson gave us a warning that mask up. And his figure shows a finger pointing outside out to us as a people saying mask up Gwerume has posted his pieces online to keep people from coming to his studio and potentially spreading the coronavirus art dealer shingirai mafara says he wants to hold an art exhibition to display Gwerume's work for a wider reach so I find these pieces very, very um, pivotal uh, in terms of um, not just putting back Zimbabwean art sculpture on the map because we are definitely back on the map, but also um, setting awareness to um, to uh, to the entire world. Let's get vaccinated. Let's wear masks. Let's social distance. Let's hold hands and 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 try to 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 to, to get get through this together. Gwerume work has also caught the attention of officials in Zimbabwe. Artists like him, the country's art council representative says are thinking outside the box. The situation has taught our artists to be resilient, taught them to be imaginative and to be creative in terms of uh, sustenance and uh, how do you make a livelihood in such an environment which is not easy to, to operate. When uh, um, sources of income, uh, creating money or making money has been closed totally. Nguerume hopes to work with art auctioneers and use part of the proceeds to get personal protective equipment or PPEs for Zimbabwe's health workers. Zimbabwe's doctors and nurses have struggled due to lack of adequate resources while working in the front lines of prevention and treatment during the coronavirus pandemic. Columbus Mavungam for VOA News, Harare, Zimbabwe. Well, and that's our show for today. You can find all the continent's top news and world news online at voaafrica.com. Check it out. I'm Vincent McCoy in Washington. Channel's television has our last word from Lagos. We look forward to bringing you another show next week. Channelstv.com is your source for news and other programming. I'm Chamberlain Nassau. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.